So I recently got a, uh, a follow-up CIMT, carotid intima media thickness test. It's looking at the carotid artery in your neck, and intima media means the amount of plaque that's been deposited between the layers of your artery wall. I got some good news. Um, even though we, I did this with a totally different company, Cardio Risk, which we're now using, we still saw an overall plaque burden of 0.68 uh, millimeters, which correlates to a, um, the age of a 52-year-old, 53-year-old. So that's good. The bad news, though, was I had a discrete plaque, and that, that plaque's been there for a while. It's uh, stubborn and actually appears to be continuing to grow. It's, uh, the H here means heterogeneous. This is the right uh, carotid um, bulb, and... Um, it's 1.6 millimeters, heterogeneous, that's what the H means. Heterogeneous, heterogeneous means there's calcium in it. And the fact that there's calcium scares a lot of people. In fact, that's what we want to do. We want to get calcium in, the, um, in that plaque because it is associated with um, stabilization uh, and forming a fibrous plaque cap. So <clears throat> we'll talk about all those in just a few minutes, but first a brief introduction. Ford, F-O-R-D, Brewer, B-R-E-W-E-R. -E -E um, and this is the prevention channel. You know, it's not easy to uh, prevent heart attack and stroke, but uh, we help our patients do that every day. Uh, heart attack, stroke, dementia is, again, all led by the same process, cardiovascular inflammation. So I'll talk just a few minutes about those uh, as we go through this process. First of all, let me, um, <clears throat> let me cover some of the information on the, um, on the CIMT. As I said, um, this shows my age, uh, 60, my uh, plaque burden, 0.68 millimeters, um, arterial age would be 53, again, the left bulb appears to be fine, right bulb, uh, we've got that, that plaque, and again, there's the nomogram where that appears. Here's an interesting point. This, um, you may remember from previous uh, videos, my very first um, CIMT was done in February of 2015. I was age 57, and I had a total plaque burden of uh, what, one point, you know, excuse me, 0.884 millimeters. That corresponds to about a 72 year old. Uh, that's not good. Um, you Basically you go to this level, 0.884, and then go down to see, again, it's uh, 70, 72 year olds have uh, have that age. 73 year old is where they put it. So again, not a good thing. I was surprised because I've always kept my weight down. I've done a plant-based diet. I've found since then that I have some insulin resistance, which is not unusual given the fact that I'm 60 years old. I <clears throat> have always been anti-medication, but I bit the bullet having seen that first number and decided to go ahead and take statins. Hated that decision, but I was glad that I did because if you watch what happened over the next uh, 16 months, there was a steady drop from, um, what, 0.884 millimeters to 0.744 millimeters to 0.672 uh, millimeters. That last one was in September of 2016, and here you can see, um, this is currently, what, April of 2018, and my number is 0.68, so I've stabilized at that amount. Now, again, that's a good thing. Let's go back and talk for a second about those discrete plaques. Um, if you're going to find... What's the difference between overall plaque burden and discrete plaques? Um, a discrete plaque is an area where you've got a bump. Um, 
We'll show, again, some of these in a few minutes as we explain some of the uh, science behind these. Um, overall plaque burden is the amount of LDL that you have deposited between your intima layer and your media layer of your artery. Um, <clears throat> now, as you uh, may know, may not, let's just look at the picture here. We're talking about the carotid artery. That's where this is done. And why would you do it in the carotid artery if you're worried about heart attack? It's less than 2 to 3% that you see nothing in the neck, but still see something in the coronary. Um, laying down plaque is, for the vast majority uh, of the case, a systemic issue, a biochemical issue. And again, the vast majority of the case is usually associated with insulin resistance. That's why as we get older, we get begin to get insulin resistant, we start to get form these plaques. Now to go back to the point about why, uh, why do you see discrete plaques here? Well, wherever you have a fork in a, um, in a hemodynamic or flow area, you're going to get turbulence. <clears throat> and actually I'll show you a uh, picture of the turbulence in my artery a little bit later. But let's go back and talk about the science first. <clears throat> this is what I was talking about with, this is a normal artery. Again, this is uh, credit to uh, Brad Bale and Amy Donine. They do some really good um, uh, meetings three or four times a year where docs or basically the public could come in and listen to uh, what they know about the science behind this area. This. Um, that's where I got started in looking at this level using CIMTs and some of the things I'm talking concepts I'm talking about here. In a normal clear artery with no deposition, this is what you have. You have the media layer, which is the muscle, which keeps that artery from blowing up as blood flows through it at 120 millimeters of mercury of pressure. This is the layer, the intima layer, uh, that keeps fl clots from forming. It does some other metabolic things as well, but that's what happens. Now, <clears throat> if you go get a, a lot, of, a lot of people say, oh, I've had a carotid ultrasound and it was clean. A carotid ultrasound does not measure, routinely measure this. That's the CIMT. It's a computerized analysis of the overall plaque burden by measuring the distance between here and here and averaging it out to help you understand how much of this you're laying down. If you just get what 90, what 90, 95% of, uh, of um, carotid ultrasounds are, you're just getting this. You're getting a, an image um, to see if you have plaque. And they'll tell you it's negative unless you have 50% or more occlusion of the lumen. The lumen is the hole where the blood flows. This one has 50% or more occlusion. So this one would show up as a positive on a carotid ultrasound. This would not. It would show up as negative. And this is where the problem is. This is a, um, as you can see from the way this, this is retracted back away from the specimen slide, this is liquid. This is waxy material. It's safe and stable. It's not going to form a break out and form a clot. This, on the other hand, has been attacked by the immune system this is a blow up of that version. Here you can see a lot better what's going on. This is the media layer, that muscle layer. This is the intima layer. And this is the hot plaque that you see over here. So, <clears throat> what does that look like in a real body? Uh, this is an actual gross specimen. Gross meaning large. You didn't have to have a microscope to take a look at it. Uh, you can't tell the, the layers quite as well, but, but you can uh, figure them out. This, for example, this thin layer right here is the intima layer. It is this layer before that hot plaque broke out. Uh, it did break out, and it formed a clot. That's what hot plaque does. That, as you can see from here, that clot formed on inside what used to be that area of hot plaque. The rest of this clot blo broke off 
uh, caused a heart attack, killed the patient. Another interesting thing here is you notice this brown spot. This is not fully liquid yet, but it's headed in that direction. So what you begin to see is, again, this is a systemic pro process, the formation of uh, inflamed plaque. It's not a localized process. And again, plaque inflammation is the, the major risk here, not so much the, um, the formation of a stable waxy plaque. This is a, uh, a diagram that was created by uh, Cleveland Heart Labs. They've been recently purchased by Quest. <clears throat> and basically, they've got some labs which you can use to estimate the activity of the immune uh, cells. These, these green things are MPO, myeloperoxidase. That's one of the tests in there um, in the inflammation panel. Plaque 2 is also, <clears throat> it's released by... Um, <clears throat> by some of these, <clears throat> excuse me, it's an enzyme released by some of these cells as well. So as you see here, this is going from a normal artery wall to beginning of some inflammation, increased inflammation, get to the point where you uh, release some of that hot plaque out and you form a clot. Let's look at it from a microscopic perspective. Again, uh, just very early uh, plaque formation process. This is the intima layer. This is the media layer, the muscles, the muscle cell. And these are red blood cells in the lumen flowing up and down the, uh, or flowing down the artery wall. So what's happening is you get, you get a significant increase in the um, LDL deposition here. You start getting mon uh, immune cells like monocytes, um, uh, neutrophils, other types of cells. Neutrophils, by the way, are the ones that release MPO or myeloperoxidase. Monocytes cluster together form fo uh, and form foam cells, which releases LPPLA2, plaque 2. Now, <clears throat> we've talked many times about vitamin K2. There's a lot of folks out there that are big vitamin K2 fans, and what they say is you want to get that calcium out of the arteries and get it into the bones so you're healthy. Not so fast. Think about this. What we're looking at right here is the difference between a stable plaque over here with uh, some fibrous and muscle uh, tissue forming at the top of the plaque, mostly fibrous tissue, and the calcification goes along with the fibrous tissue. It's the ones that that continue to uh, form what we call necrotic tissue or dead tissue and no fibrous cap or a very thin fibrous cap, no calcification, that are at risk for this necrotic hot inflamed plaque to go out into the artery wall and form a clot. <clears throat> so that's why you may have heard me say a couple of times in this video and other ones, um, we're, uh, we'd like to see a soft plaque go echogenic or heterogenic. Uh, heterogenic means that it's getting sp speckles of that uh, calcium in it. Echogenic means that it's hardened entirely. Now, <clears throat> let's go back and, and cover something briefly. You remember I mentioned that, there, that if you're going to have a discrete plaque, a small area of plaque uh, in the carotids, it's usually going to form in the bulb, and that I had one. Um, there's a, there's a portion of the uh, CIMT test called the Doppler. You may remember Doppler is looking at whether um, the Doppler sound with a car, where the, the car goes higher and then lower as it goes towards you and then away. Well, you can measure that, that also on the uh, flow within a um, carotid artery. The... Blue is one end of the spectrum, the red and then yellow is another end of the spectrum. So, here's how that interprets. If you've got blue and yellow and red in the same area, then you've got one of them flowing towards you and another one flowing away. In other words, by definition, turbulence. <clears throat> I'm going to show you the uh, CIMT of a patient that I saw recently. And as you can see, 
his CIMT does not show uh, any of this significant turbulence at all. I'm jealous uh, of his arteries. This is a gentleman that, um, sure enough, has, uh, he's in his early 50s. He's got the arterial age of a 48-year-old man. But his IMT, uh, total uh, uh, LDL burden, is still uh, 0.64. Remember, mine was only 0.68 at this point. It started out at 0.88. So I'm in a much better condition, uh, almost very similar to this uh, young man here. He has no discrete plaques, so he has no He doesn't have the significant turbulence uh, that I have. Now, <clears throat> what's also interesting about this individual is his um, OGTT. His uh, fasting uh, glucose was 90, his one hour was 102, and his two hour was 73. This individual is in that classic space where uh, people in their early 50s are starting to develop some insulin resistance. When he came to see us, what, maybe a year ago, um, his, uh, his one hour was not uh, one, 102 like it is now. It was actually a little bit over 130, I believe. Uh, after hearing what we do and hearing about uh, some low-carb low diets, some other things. He's improved his diet uh, significantly, and he's improved his health, as you can see from those results. And again, as you can see, it also translates out into measurement of uh, carotid intima media thickness tests. Thank you for your interest.